brought to you by Raycon. Stay tuned till the end for more information. Fruit of the Loom is an American clothing manufacturer most well known for selling underwear. Most people recognize the brand for their colorful logo which has nothing to do with underwear. In the middle is a big red apple surrounded by three different colored grapes and dark green leaves. According to official sources, that's all there is to the Fruit of the Loom logo, but many people will claim that this version is missing something. One of the strangest topics of obscure online lore is the discrepancy over whether the Fruit of the Loom logo ever contained a cornucopia. It's an example of the Mandela Effect, a phenomenon where many people's memories do not match up with reality. Many examples of the Mandela Effect can be chalked up to common misconceptions. The often cited Berenstain Bears is most likely misremembered due to how common the suffix Steen is in proper names. People misspell Looney Tunes because of how they're used to spelling cartoon. People misspell Fruit Loops because of how they're used to spelling fruit. A lot of these erroneous memories are created out of a company stylizing a certain word in a logo and our brains autocorrecting it to a more conventional version. Anyone who has ever studied for a history exam can tell you that we can't always count on our memory. We utilize a combination of schemas and heuristics to efficiently process information. These cognitive techniques give us speed at the cost of accuracy. They allow us to read scrambled words like these, but sometimes they cause us to miss information hiding in plain sight. On my Dale Earnhardt video, I missed this typo despite reviewing it nearly a hundred times in editing. Sometimes our minds play tricks on us and we see things that aren't really there. This is the construct. Most psychologists believe that memory is a reconstructive process. We recall information not through identical snapshots of events, but by piecing together a scene through a series of key details. Reconstruction prevents memories from being 100% faithful to reality. No one can pay attention to all the minutiae of an event, so beyond a certain point of specificity, certain details will be left out, rendering our memories forever incomplete. In addition to this, reconstruction may be influenced by several other cognitive processes resulting in distortions. Sometimes people may reconstruct a single memory out of multiple separate but similar events. This is likely the reason behind some people remembering the mythical Sinbad genie movie Shazam. In 1996, Shaq starred in a movie called Kazam, two years after a Sinbad TV airing in which he dressed like a genie. The lost Sinbad movie was simply the result of people conflating these similar events. There was no Jiffy peanut butter, only Jiff and Skippy. When recalling information, we tend to either miss details or mix up details with something else very similar. What is far more unusual is recalling a unique detail that supposedly never existed. The Fruit of the Loom discrepancy implies that numerous people are falsely inserting an extraneous object into the recollection of the logo. This isn't the same as people misremembering a monocle on the Monopoly Man. Caricatures of wealthy aristocrats are often depicted with a top hat and monocle, so it's entirely plausible that people would project the image of a monocle onto their memories of Mr. Monopoly. Ultimately, the error is nothing more than adding a small circle and line to a monochromatic drawing. With the Fruit of the Loom logo, people are supposedly mistaken in envisioning a distinct brown object unlike anything else in the frame. A cornucopia, also known as a horn of plenty, is not exactly a common object. WordCount.org ranks the term cornucopia around the 42,000th most common word in the English language. I'd imagine that for most of you watching, it's a word that only crosses your mind maybe once per year. Even on the rare occasion that someone does encounter the term, its most common present-day use is the figurative sense, meaning abundance, or the term used to describe the place with all the weapons in the Hunger Games. The physical object the word is referring to serves the very niche purpose of a decorative autumn accessory. Cornucopias are most frequently depicted among fruits and vegetables common to the fall harvest. This includes apples and grapes, but more often features pumpkins, squash, corn, and sunflowers, crops you'd expect to see around Thanksgiving time. For most of us, the sight of a cornucopia will evoke a color palette of gold, brown, and orange, consistent with the changing vegetation of autumn. These colors are mostly absent from the Fruit of the Loom logo, so it's somewhat far-fetched to infer that this image would naturally prime people to think of a cornucopia. 
If that were the case, then wouldn't people be mistaking a cornucopia out of any logo with a pile of fruit? To make matters more bizarre, many who claim to remember the cornucopia mentioned that they first learned about the object from the Fruit of the Loom logo. Some recall specific conversations with their parents in which they mistook the object for a seashell or a bugle chip. Others distinctly remember mistakenly referring to the cornucopia as the loom, which is another term most young children haven't learned yet. It's much harder to dismiss this version of the logo as a fabrication when so many corresponding memories exist. Most people claim the cornucopia logo existed in the 1990s and early 2000s, although some recall the cornucopia as far back as the 60s and 70s. In 1973, jazz musician Frank West released a parody of the underwear brand whose album cover referenced the shape of a cornucopia. In 2006, the film Ant Bully depicted a pair of underwear clearly based on the Fruit of the Loom brand, which also features a cornucopia. In the 2012 South Park episode about ziplining, Cartman's underwear portrayed an additional reference to Fruit of the Loom, which once again depicts a cornucopia. These are three different kinds of media from three different decades, all portraying the same object in reference to Fruit of the Loom's logo. Additional references to the cornucopia can be found in various print sources across the time span. However, in stark contrast to the abundance of personal testimony and secondary sources regarding the logo, physical evidence of the cornucopia's existence has proven hard to come by. Over the years, Fruit of the Loom has sold conceivably millions of products, so how is it that hardly anyone has been able to produce even a single example of the cornucopia existing on old clothing? Solving the paradox is seemingly as easy as reaching into your old underwear drawer and finding a pair with a design. So why can't anyone seem to do it? Wear the same underwear in the safety of your own home. Fruit of the Loom, we keep making it better, not expensive. Vintage Fruit of the Loom ads aren't much better at helping us find the cornucopia. Many followers of the theory like to point to this cancelled trademark filed by the US patent database as evidence. However, the legal code cited in the paperwork is liberally applied to any trademark with a pile of fruit, so we can't assume this is significant for Fruit of the Loom. Company representatives continue to deny that any trace of a cornucopia ever existed, leaving many ardent supporters of the elusive logo utterly baffled. The result is one of the most mysterious and widespread misconceptions of our time. It's a dilemma that makes no sense for either side. Why would so many people erroneously believe that such a visually distinct object once existed in the logo? And why would Fruit of the Loom have any reason to instigate a mass cover-up? This was something people all around the world would see every time they pulled down their pants to use the toilet. How could it result in this much confusion? Well, going back to previous examples, one explanation for the discrepancy would be that people are simply confusing the Fruit of the Loom logo with some other prominent logo featuring a cornucopia. Browsing the US trademark registry reveals several other similar logo designs, but none belonging to brands prominent enough to reasonably create such a widespread dispute. Some like to point to the brown leaves of a previous logo iteration and claim that people have confused that for the cornucopia. While the shape and formation of the leaves is not at all like the supposed cornucopia design, it is somewhat plausible that on very small print versions of the tag, some people may have mixed up the two. Another explanation could be that the cornucopia version of the logo was only printed on knockoff versions of the main brand. Knockoffs are common for virtually any brand of apparel, but Fruit of the Loom typically marketed itself as an inexpensive consumer product, so it seems unlikely that a generic clone could claim enough of the market share to fool so many people about the true appearance of the logo. It's possible that the Cornucopia logo only existed as a seasonal variant, or as part of a special collection. This could explain why people can only find the standard fruit version. Maybe the Cornucopia only existed on some tags of Fruit of the Loom products, rather than serving as the official logo. Either way, these explanations don't help us justify why physical versions of the cornucopia don't seem to exist. More radical theories point to the idea of parallel universes and timeline swapping, the possibility that our consciousness was seamlessly transferred to a totally separate but equally plausible reality, a reality where everything is identical except for a few cosmetic differences between brand names and an undiscovered Sinbad movie. Uh. I really don't think... You got a better explanation? Nah. Uh, oh. Well, uh... 
At the end of the day, does it really matter whether or not the Fruit of the Loom logo has a cornucopia, or whether Kit Kat has a hyphen, or whether the tip of Pikachu's tail is black? The Mandela Effect is largely a manifestation of the mundane, information which is not salient enough for us to pay close attention. Everyone in America has probably seen the face of a penny over a thousand times, but how many of us can accurately recreate all of its components from memory? The fact of the matter is that the face of a penny is not relevant to how we understand it as an object. There is no disputing who was president in 1985 or what the score was before the Atlanta Falcons choked in Super Bowl 51. We tend to remember whatever we find important, fascinating, or unique, and oftentimes your underwear tag doesn't quite fall into that category. Sometimes it's easier to imagine that reality itself has been distorted than confront the idea that our memory on an everyday level is quite fallible. Memory is one of our only connections with the past. In many ways, how we remember the world makes up the essence of who we are as a person. We go about our lives under the assumption that what we remember is entirely accurate, and it's terrifying to consider that our assessment of reality may only be tenuous at best. Ultimately, memory is a lot like underwear. We use it every day, it's necessary for our daily lives, and we always have it on unless we're very intoxicated. We don't tend to think about it very much because it seems so straightforward and reliable. Unfortunately, both memory and underwear are doomed to wind up permanently stained with something we don't quite understand. A cornucopia, much like a memory, is a relic of a bygone time a token of the past that will forever remain frustratingly out of reach. At least now you can appreciate being in the now. The present makes up a tiny fraction of our lives compared to the past and future, but it's the only time frame we will ever truly know. We live in an unprecedented era when we are no longer encumbered by the imperfections of memory alone. Almost everybody on Earth now has the ability to capture a moment in time with as much detail as you can fit on an HD display. Thanks to the technology of the future, our connection with the past has never been stronger. So be sure to preserve the past by taking plenty of photos and videos in the present. Enjoy the now, even the mundane details, because you never know just how suddenly things can change. How nice of you to stop by. I was just getting ready to chow down on another delicious Thanksgiving feast. So Rusty, do you remember a cornucopia in the Fruit of the Loom logo? Do I ever? Of course I do. No, of course I don't. Why would there, why would there be a cornucopia in the Fruit of the Loom logo? It doesn't make any sense. Is Fruit of the Loom supposed to be a, a Thanksgiving based uh, uh, underwear company? Is this all part of this uh, the, the Mandela effect? The whole thing, did Mandela die or was he just in prison for a long time? Can you imagine how disrespectful, or how disrespectful it is? Not can you even imagine, it definitely is. Is the man dead or is he still alive? I mean, all right, it's it's very effing stupid that uh, uh, people are, are confusing movies that are, are include huge stars. Like, all right, did Kazam actually have... Was Kazam a movie about a genie starring Shaquille O'Neal, or was it Shazam with a uh, largely forgotten actor uh, Sinbad? Of course it was Kazam with, with Shaquille O'Neal, the movie that everyone remembers if you're older than 20 years old. Yes. Uh, oh boy, sounds like yet another classic uh, Thanksgiving uh, dinner table uh, rant. It's a good thing I have these noise-isolating Raycon earbuds. Is the dog that gave away... If you're looking for a great gift this holiday season, you should pick up a pair of Raycon Everyday E25s. Starting at just half the price of other premium brands, Raycon earbuds offer enhanced bass and seamless Bluetooth pairing with a more compact, comfortable design. Pass the time while traveling by using their high-quality sound to listen for never-before-heard Mandela effects in your favorite songs. And with up to six hours of battery life, you can outlast those really long family arguments. Now's the time to get the best prices of the year on Raycons, but hurry, this offer is only available for a limited time. 
So check out the link in the description below or head on over to buyraycon.com slash amplemon for 20% off your order. Who are you talking to? Who are you talking to? There's no one else here. Everyone is dead. The virus has killed everyone. Everyone is literally dead right now. Why are you trying to sell your, this, this product to nobody? You think anyone cares? No one's alive.